All right, guys. Um, coming at you today, we're going to talk some more fiberglass stuff because I keep getting questions, and I don't have time to keep answering these questions every time I get asked. Those are repetitive questions. Let's go make a video about it, and I'll just send people to the video. If they don't want to do the, re the research for themselves, they ain't got time to watch the video. I don't have time to talk to them. Okay. Fiberglassing. We already talked last video about uh, mixing fiberglass, resin. Next thing. We've got the resin mixed. What do we do now? Capiche. This is what you're gonna buy at the store. Not the best stuff, but you can get it. I like to make my videos to the point because I like people, or things that people can buy everywhere. So you can buy that everywhere. Pretty much any convenience store, any auto port store gonna have this. Next thing, chip brushes. Two inch chip brush. Capiche. I use two inch, people use three inches. Some people use one inch. I, mean, I have friends that use, I mean, you see, you're doing some fiberglass work in here. You can, three inch, three inch brush. Next thing, these gloves, disposable, Harbor Freight, like $3 or $2.50 or free with some coupons or something, I'm sure. That's what you need to fiberglass. That's the basics right there. Let's go back in a little more detail on this now. We've got our resin. We've got our mat. What we are not going to do is take this and it comes out to, I might have a little few pieces here. Um, so obviously it comes out into a big roll like that, okay? Bunch of it. What you don't wanna do, because I actually had a, a friend of mine this weekend that tried to do this. This is how I'm gonna bring this video up. He. Uh, if it were fiberglass and say this panel right here, he cut out a piece of chop mat that covered this. It starts going to town. The problem with that is, by the time you get all of this over, you've got a ton of stringy fiberglass strands everywhere. Everywhere, okay? And they're sticking to your brush. And then you're getting a gooey brush. And then next thing you know, those hairs work their way up to your hand. And even with gloves on, they're sticking to your hand. So every time you go to dip your brush or maybe set your brush down to get another piece of mat, your brush is sticking to your hand. We don't want to do that. So we're not going to do that. What we're going to do with this is, depending if we were fiberglassing this particular size panel, what I would do is cut four inch-ish, this is, doesn't have to be exact science, four inch by four inch circles, or squares, pardon me. So you get your cut, your, your fiberglass to be all folded out in a big monster thing, you do like four little pieces. Four inch, four inch, four inch, four inch, four inch, four inch. Four inch. Get a bunch of those, I do this, I do this personally before I even start mixing resin or anything. Is I will make like, I'll take a, this whole thing and I'm not gonna open it for, because I don't, I mean, I, I have, you've seen I have that box over there, it's full of fiberglass, so we don't need to use that, but. Um, I'll open this whole thing up and literally cut this whole package worth of little squares or little strips or something like that. What's gonna happen when you're gonna lay those down? You're gonna lay a strip down. And you're gonna take your paintbrush down here and you're going to dab. Well, first thing you're gonna do is take your resin, dip in your resin, smear it on the panel. Okay? Then you're gonna lay your fiberglass piece down. Then, try to get back enough where I can show you what I'm doing. Dip it again in your resin and kind of dab it. What you want to do is get all of the air bubbles out. What is an air bubble? An air bubble is a, you'll see the spots where it made contact is going to be dark. Um, and the spots where there's a little air bubble are going to be lighter. Now, like this first layer and this particular material, it would not be possible probably to get all of the air bubbles out because of the fact that there's little divots and stuff and the surface is not really level. But basically that's what you want to do. Get as many of those air bubbles out by dabbing. You'll dab them out. And you can use, I mean, as much, if you need more resin to dab and some bubbles out, okay. Um, then, once you get one piece in, again, same, repeat the same step. Dip in your resin, smear it out. Once it's smeared out, put your next little strip down. Okay, your next little strip out. 
after because I what I usually do is I'll dab and then because you usually have the first layer you put down a resin soaks up through the mat so when you add more resin you end up with an excess on this layer so I usually take some of that by just through dab and you'll suck it up and you can smear your actually your next spot with the resin from the first piece normally if not you don't have to do it that way that's just the way it normally works out for me um, resin wipe piece down dab next piece resin wipe lay a little piece down dab okay that's chop strand mat you know chop strand mat the other stuff is cloth um, I'm gonna grab a marker and show you why I personally do not use cloth have never well I'll have don't use it anymore it has its purposes I will give you that but when we're building most fiberglass things like when we're, I mean, I'm talking base head related stuff here doing wheel walls inside of a box when you get a chop strand mat they call it woven so the strands go like this and then your other layer goes like this etc etc et this is a, like a zoomed in version of it okay well mark it back together here when you what this is is it's only technically speaking two-way directional fiberglass so it's going to give you structural strength this way and structural strength this way if you had a, a bend this way this is not the material to use for it because it's only going to give you its optimal strength this way and this way, not this way. Will it still be strong enough? Yeah, it probably will, but it's not designed for that. It's designed to do corners of a box to where you're going to worry about the edges flexing this way or worrying about a corner flexing this way, not a corner flexing this way. This is a wheel well type stuff. Um, I use chop strand mat. Chop strand mat has, you get the idea. That's a chop strand mat layout. I mean, it's all over the place. You can see it's a it's what they call om, or omnidirectional, I believe is what they call it. You can see all the little fibers, all the little directions they go on there. So that gives optimal strength in all directions, which is why I, ever since I learned this, I just use chop strand mat. Because no matter what the application, this works. And uh, no matter, uh, it, you can find this more places than cloth. Oftentimes they're both at the same stores, but if you get a place where it's not at the same store, uh, this is there. This is like probably the first thing you grab for on any fiberglass project. So there's that. Again, cut little strips. There's no science in how big the strips are. If I was doing a bigger piece like this, make the strips a little bigger. If you're doing a small wheel well piece, you're going to have a lot more curves. It's a lot easier to just curve a piece that's only an inch or so wide versus a six inch wide piece or so. Um, again, do not take and just build a big fiberglass cutout to save yourself some cutting time. It will be a pain in the ass and you'll end up with a lot of fiberglass stringies. It doesn't work nice. It's hard to lay out a big panel like that unless you have a vacuum chamber and uh, rollers and all that fancy stuff. I'm trying to do this simple for you guys. Make this cakewalk. So, that's what I got to say about that. Um, that's how you layer up uh, if you're using this chart, like it can be found in Google. Just slowly type in resin. I just typed in fiberglass resin mixing chart. This is what comes up on Google. There it is, boom. Works great for Bondo resin. Um, if you're using a, I will bring this up a little bit. If you're using a, like a, a Napa or a, higher quality, uh, higher, more expensive fiberglass. What I've found is I've used a lot of that, a few, a little bit of that stuff, is I actually had to double these hardener ratios to get the right amount of hardener in my fiberglass. So, little side note, but yeah, that's, we're talking resin here. So you put your gloves on before you mix your resin, mix your resin, grab your two inch chip brush, now, if you're another thing I want to bring up real quick, I keep this videos kind of short and to the point, um, with a lot of knowledge in them, as much as I can bestow upon you, lads. Um, is as you're, if you mix up like an eight ounce batch, you have a mixing cup. Show you what that looks like. Uh, again, I use mixing cups, so got a mixing cup. Eight ounce batch, okay. 
What you're going to want to do as you're fiberglassing, depending on how what the weather is like, but you actually want to keep stirring it between like you go to dab that or smear that piece on, dab, put your piece of fiberglass down, dab her out, and then reach in again, give it like a sweep from the bottom up, stir that resin. Because if you let it sit, when it sits is when it wants to set up the worst, or when it wants to set up the fastest. So as long as you keep that resin mixing, we'll say, as you're fiberglassing, you, if you've mixed your resin right according to temperature, you won't have it jelly up on you. So, um, video's 10 and a half minutes long now. Uh, hopefully that gets uh, what you guys need to know crossed. If anybody has any questions, please comment on the video. And I'm gonna make another video in response to any questions. So again, I can just point people to this video. So thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next one.